Good morning. Glad you could join us for session number two. Introduction. We're live from McGoffin County High School. Excited for our class two. Thank you guys. We're here in McGoffin County High School again. We were supposed to record from Letcher County, but our internet connectivity wasn't just exactly what um, we wanted it to be. And we want you to have a very clear, um, concise picture so that this flows smoothly. So internet connectivity is very important. And along those lines, Belfry High School, if you're on with us, stay on after the session because we're recording from your location next week. Let me also say that I asked everyone to get on the holler.org and some of you are having difficulties getting on. The problem has been that, um, not necessarily with the holler, but um, the rights that are given in your district. So if you're having difficulty getting on the holler, make sure you let the district technology coordinator know in your, either the school technology coordinator or the district technology coordinator in your district. Also, if you're using um, Internet Explorer, you will have difficulties with the holler. You have to use Chrome or Safari or Foxfire or one of the other browsers in order for um, the holler to work properly like it's supposed to. Again, we're going to follow the same procedure today. If you have questions during the session, go to the message box in the lower left-hand corner of the screen and type in any questions that you might have. One more thing before we let uh, Christopher Epling begin with you today, your art supplies. They have arrived and there is a Bridges Out of Poverty workshop this week um, that most every district is going to be participating in and I need the innovation coordinators from each district to let me know every school in their district that's participating so I know how many supplies to send back to your district. When everybody logs on, I don't, I don't get a snapshot of that to see where you're coming from. And several um, innovation coordinators wrote down the schools that are on their list, so I only know who they put on the list, and then Knott County emailed me theirs, and Floyd County emailed me theirs. So I've got Knott and Floyd and anybody, the innovation coordinators that wrote it down um, at our last um, ARI um, innovation coordinators meeting, but if there's any other school that joined that needs supplies that are not on my list, um, check with your innovation coordinator and say, did you put our school and our class on the list? And we'll try to send your supplies out this week um, through the participants from the district um, that come to the Bridges Out of Poverty session. So again, you don't want to hear from me, you want to hear from Christopher Epling. So thank you for joining us. This is session number two. We hope to have session number two on the holler in a little more timely fashion than we did the first time, but we were learning and had a little uh, glitch, but we'll get it on very quickly this time. And also there will be an additional video on, um, a, a more instructional video this time um, that you'll be able to get on and see. But students, make sure that you get onto the holler, log on and register, and let's get some conversation going about the work that you've been doing. Have fun today. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can see me well, hear me well, and everything. I um, want to start off by thanking again uh, Kelly Thompson and KBEC, uh, Unite, um, and also uh, Bruce Parsons' help up at the uh, University of Pikeville to get the videos created, and um, all the coordinators and everybody involved in making this possible. Uh, this is week two, session two, Words with Pictures. So today we're going to actually be looking at your story. Now my back's turned again to the students here. I apologize for that. I know it's a little awkward, but we have to do that because, you know, you, you have to be able to see too. So hopefully it'll all go well. Um, words with pictures. So last week we covered um, the types of stories, the elements of stories. And I promise this week there'll be more drawing and there will be. Um, this session is probably the most important because even though it's from, from third, fourth grade on up to, to 12th grade, uh, you have to, it's a good idea to prepare uh, before you start the actual production for your book. The worst thing that a student or a young writer or a young illustrator can do is uh, sit down with the story and just start drawing on the pages and then uh, and, you know with the uh, intent that what they're drawing and creating on that page is going to be used in the final product. Uh, this is such a large and broad session that it's going to have to be broken into two different parts, so part one and part two, and this is part one obviously. Uh, we're going to be looking at character design. We're going to be uh, taking a consideration of your setting in your story and how to work that in through your artwork. 
We're going to be uh, looking at the different parts of a story, how it flows, and most of all, in preparation of creating what's called a storyboard. And a storyboard is basically your blueprints. Uh, so we'll be going over all this. Now, I will be uh, showing you some, some, uh, some text here on the flip chart, uh, some notes. If you want to just jot down some quick notes today, I highly encourage that to the teachers and students um, because we're going to be covering some material that's going to be sort of dense, okay? Uh, I'll be putting this on the holler.org, so all of this will be available in a, a Word document. Uh, the notes from today and the, sort of the guidelines and, and the helpful hints and things. So uh, look for that later on today. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get started now. Uh, like I said, this is such a broad range of uh, topics to cover. What we're doing, we're looking at uh, stories from students, and your stories could be very, very diverse. You know, you could have a story with tons of different settings. Just think of all the different settings we could have in our story. Your story could take place in another world. Your story could involve uh, maybe something that's autobiographical, something really that happened to you. It could be made up completely fictional. You could even include different sorts of uh, characters from humans to animals. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities for your story. So what I want to do today is, is really cover the broad range of that. And everybody knows Adventure Time, right? have a lot of fans of Adventure Time in the schools. Uh, so we think about character design. I want you to think about your favorite characters while we're going through this. Think about how they look. Um, one of the biggest uh, kind of faults that uh, students' paths go, they go down is they try to create their work too, uh, there's too much detail. If you notice some of the most popular comics and cartoons and characters and things, they all are fairly simple design. And no matter what it is you're creating, no matter what type of character you have, everything begins with a simple line. It's how you use that line. You can bend it, shape it, reform it. So don't overcomplicate this. Your artwork does not have to be too complicated. More and more, it's about story. If you got on the holler.org and you resourced the one uh, 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 PDF that I put up there, I had examples from um, current children's books, past picture books, and graphic novels and comics showing characters are very, very minimal design. Okay? So don't overcomplicate it. There's even examples of stick figures being used, okay? So if you say, I can't, I can't draw, which is the one rule we don't have, you cannot say, I can't draw, because technically if you can hold a pen or a pencil and you can make marks on a piece of paper, you can draw. Now, you are allowed to say, I can't draw like Marvel. I can't draw like Disney. I'm not able to draw like the artist at, at DC Comics. That's fine, okay? But you can draw. It's about the story, and it's about shaping your story in a way that fits on the page with pictures, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. All right, so we'll say goodbye to the film for now. So I want you to remember all through this process, through the eight weeks we're going to be together or so, I want you to remember this website, the holler dot. Or it's where we're going to be communicating. It's where we're going to be sharing ideas. Students, whenever you create characters and you want to share those characters, you can post those images and your progress on the holler. Our intent for this was to be interactive. Students to share what maybe some of the challenges they're having or share some of the uh, successes they're having in creating their story. So adapting your story into pictures is going to take a little bit of planning. It's not something that you just sit down and start doing so during this process, you want to keep in mind what type of story you've written, the settings, the types of characters that's in your story. All these elements will come together. And what will happen is, at the end, once you have all these elements together, you use your storyboard as a blueprint to create your book. Okay? That's the most important thing from today is preparation. If you do a good job in preparing for your storyboard, Creating your book is simple. All you have to do is sort of follow your own instructions you've created for yourself. And when you go to the holler.org, you're able to see progress from other students. 
You're able to access different materials that's going to be provided to help you in creating your characters. All of these things are going to be made available. Okay? So go to theholler.org and check out what's all available on there. Okay? All right. I want you guys to share and interact. That's the biggest thing. All right. So let's go over last week really fast, kind of uh, cover a few things that we talked about. Remember I talked about your options that you have in your created work. You have the option of um, a picture book. Now, if you're familiar with what a picture book typically looks like, we have very, very, very um, uh, big illustrations. So usually you have work that's going to have the drawing to go all the way to the edges of the paper, right? The drawing really is the biggest part of the story. Um, whenever you're creating your storyboard, and a little bit later I'll walk you through how you do that, but as you're creating your storyboard, if you're doing a picture book, keep in mind that you have to fit the words on the page somewhere. Now, usually with a typical um, picture book, there's not very many words. Um, and I know a lot of you already have, have, have shared with me progress. Evan Cottle, an eighth grader, uh, sent me his work. His teacher did uh, Misty Skeens, and, and it's, a, it's just amazing. I, I'm really honestly excited to see what you're going to come up with for an end product. But your storyboard will literally either make or break a quality work in the end. How you prepare from third grade all the way up to twelfth grade. And I'll tell you kind of how to do that, um, how do you can walk your students through the preparation, even in third and fourth grade all the way up, okay? So picture book. Think about where the words are going to appear, okay? Now another option you have is chapter books. Chapter books are a little different. There's a lot more words in a chapter book. The pictures or the illustrations are still on there, but they don't make up the majority of the space on the page. For instance, um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid is a really popular book, and, 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 and there's a lot of words on there. It's not a comic book, but there's sort of comics in there, black and white drawings, funny drawings, okay? You might want to choose to use that format, but keep in mind, though, as opposed to the picture book or the chapter book, it's where you fit your illustrations on the page. There's a lot more words you have to deal with, okay? So the other option we have then is a comic book, right, or a mini comic. Now, with comic books and mini comics, there's a whole other set of guidelines for this. Here's a typical um, standard layout for a comic book. Now, when I look at that page, the first thing that comes to mind when I say this is going to be a comic book is boxes. A lot of the artwork, the word balloons, the thought balloons, the story, the narrative, all takes place inside of panels or boxes. So whenever you're doing the outline or storyboard for your comic book, you have to think about things a little different. Think about how you're going to arrange your boxes on a page. Now, it's fine for you to go ahead and just divide up the page equally. You could make uh, an even number of boxes and put all your artwork and content in those squares. That's fine. But I'd like to see you think differently about the page. Arrange boxes in different sizes, different shapes. Um, think about how you could use this space to tell your story in interesting ways. You know, if you open up a typical comic book, you don't see just the same shape of squares, the same size of squares. You see a lot of variety. variety. So be sure and keep that in mind whenever you're creating your storyboard. Now, the other option is the graphic novel. Now, basically, a graphic novel, the difference between a graphic novel and a comic book is the amount of pages. That's really the biggest difference, okay? Now, whenever those of you are taking on a graphic novel, I don't want you to overcomplicate it. That's probably going to be the most difficult in terms of laying out for a storyboard and really the time and effort you're going to put into it. It's a very, very large comic book, right? So I want you to really think about this before you get started. If you're going to take on a graphic novel, think about the size. Think about all of these things we talked about with a typical comic book. You're going to have a lot more pages. You're going to have a lot more opportunity to arrange those panels in different ways, okay? So here we have our options. Last week, session, okay? Hopefully what everyone has done since we uh, met last week was decide on your story, write your story, and then also, keeping in mind what type of template 
or type of book you're going to create. I have some examples here, a few of those. So a picture book is basically very, very large illustrations, minimal words, right? Um, we also have here a comic book. So when you're looking at a comic book, you have panels, um, boxes that are going to appear in the pages. You notice how this artist has a very large page here, I mean a large panel, small boxes at the bottom, okay? Um, in terms of a graphic novel, this book here is a really great example. Um, it's larger than a comic book, as you can see. Now, before we go on, I want to talk a little bit about this book in particular. A lot of teachers and educators, whenever I, I go into a classroom and I say, we're going to be talking about comics, creative writing with comics, a red flag goes up. Because typically when you think of comic books or um, graphic novels, superheroes are what come to mind. Batman, Superman, things like that. But this is changing in the field. Um, it's not always about superheroes anymore. And this is a great example of that. This book was written by Art Spiegelman. You see that really nasty symbol on there, right? That's a swastika. A lot of you know what's the, what this is uh, connected with, but Nazi Germany. Now, what happened back in Poland during World War II, the Nazis invaded. All of the Jewish population was rounded up, and they were put into what's called in concentration camps. It was a terrible time in their history. Uh, millions of, of Jewish uh, people died during this time period. But Art Spiegelman grew up listening to his father, who was a survivor of war-torn Poland. He survived through the concentration camps, and he came to the United States. When he arrived in the United States, Art was growing up, and his father would tell him about these different experiences that he encountered while in the Nazi and concentration camp. Art then took those experiences later on in life, and he created this book called Maus. Now, this is German for mouse. This is a graphic novel. If you open up this book, there's panels, there's boxes, there's characters. He drew the Jewish population like mice and all of the German population as cats. Now, he did that very deliberately. There's predator and prey, right? This book won a Pulitzer Prize. It has nothing to do with Batman, Superman, superheroes. Vill there is a villain in this, but that's part of the conflict in the story construct. So comics are changing. One more example before we get started a little more is this here is a book written by Joe Sacco. He's a journalist. He goes into places like Iraq, Afghanistan, and what he'll do is he records what he sees. And instead of coming back and writing an article for the New York Times, he comes back and he creates graphic novels based on what he encounters. So comic books are changing. I want you to keep that in mind. Chapter books, we reference Diary, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. For mini comics, this is a mini comic created by a senior in Powell County. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look at it here, you'll notice that it's brown construction paper. Okay? Now, this was created a couple years back, and I've held on to it and took it to every school event I went to, but it's brown construction paper that's been folded and stapled, okay? Um, mini comics are a great way to express an idea, a thought. So those of you who are creating comics, I want you to think about all the variety of ways you can uh, construct your story. But before we go on and talk about creating a storyboard, I want to ask you this question. Why go through all this work and effort to create something. What, what, what's the reason? Why would you want to even do this? Why not go play Minecraft? Why take time out of your day to work on a story, to take it, um, uh, your instructions from your teacher to tell you how to make the story better um, in terms of um, language arts? Why do that? There were a couple of very well-known storylines that actually started out as these little homemade books. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about these right now. The first one and a lot of you have been in my workshops, you know, you, you already know what's coming. But the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Now, if you look at this book, you're going to notice something that's different than most images of the turtles. They all have red bandanas on. Now, this book is a collection of all of the early, early, early mini comics. So two people, two best friends, their last names was Eastman and Laird. They created the turtles. They lived in Chicago, Illinois. They loved comics, they loved creating and sharing stories, but they didn't know the first thing about publishing. All they, all they knew is they wanted to create a homemade comic and share that with people. 
So if you were to look inside this book, you're going to see that it's all black and white, and this is a collection of all those early comics. This started out as a mini-comic. Another example of a, a storyline that started out in a homemade comic is The Walking Dead. Now, whether or not you like The Walking Dead doesn't matter. Um, but what I found is, is people either love it or they don't like it. And that's okay. That's not the point. The point is this, this name that appears on the book, Robert Kirkman. Robert Kirkman's name appears on everything associated with The Walking Dead. And the reason for that is he created The Walking Dead. He's also from Kentucky. He grew up about 30 miles south of Lexington. This started out as a mini-comic. Robert loved uh, to share his ideas and stories. He and his friends got together. They created a mini-comic about the zombies. They went to comic conventions. They passed them out at tables. One of those landed in the hands of Image Comics. And they said, you know what? We really want to produce this as a book. The rest is history, right? So taking time out to share your story, your idea, your creation could lead into really great things. And I want you to be excited about this. This is a great opportunity, okay? Now let's go on and talk a little bit about what we're doing today. What I want you to do is I want you to think about a storyboard similar to what a contractor would use for blueprints, okay? These are going to help guide you all through the creation of your book, all right? And what I'm doing here is I'm going to draw like a, hopefully what might be appear to be blueprints rolled up. You can't tell. Let's, let's see how it turns out. All right, that works. So, we're going to have different steps you follow, okay? If you follow these steps in the specific order that I'm showing you today, you're going to be fine, okay? Um, again, this is going to be really hard to write down as we go along, so what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to sort of take notes the best you can right now, get on the holler.org later on, and a PDF will be created, and all this information will be available for you, okay? All right. The first and biggest part of storyboard creation is reading and dissecting your own story. Taking what you've written and breaking it down. You have to do that in order to know where you're going to place your illustrations, what you're going to illustrate, and how the book's going to be designed or laid out. Okay. Another big part is character creation. I want you to remember to keep it simple. Basic lines. Okay. Um, if you want to get more detail with your work, that's absolutely fine. But it's real important for you to remember that we're going to create this, and the emphasis here is on story. So whether you're drawing animals, people, whatever it is you're going to be creating, try to remember to keep it simple, okay? Unless you just want to put the time and energy into it. Another part of storyboard design is the setting. When you think about the setting, it's already answered for you what that is in your story. You created it. Sometimes the setting might be a location, like in the forest. Sometimes the setting might be um, around a time of year, Christmas. All of these things come together in your storyboard to help you determine how to create your illustrations, okay? So this is basically the guideline to setting up your storyboard. Part one will be reading your story, and I want you to make two lists. It's very important, two lists. The first list you're going to create is going to be a list of characters, okay? Every character that appears in your story, I want you to write their name. The side of their name, I want you to write what they are. Here I have an example. I have Amy, Carol, and Tony. Okay? And I'm going to pretend that I've written a story. I'm breaking it down for a storyboard. So these are the list of my characters. Okay? Amy is a student. Carol is a mother. Tony is a brother. And so on. Now, on your next list, create a separate list, separate piece of paper, and this is going to be a list of settings. Okay? Now, you may have a story where the entire story takes place in a living room or in a school or some specific location. If that's the case, then you would just type or write the location that the majority of the story 
appears in. Inside house, okay? Let's say there's multiple locations. Let's say we have um, school, okay, and playground. So the first step is creating these lists. You have a list of characters and a list of settings. Now before we get into designing what the character actually looks like, so each one of these characters, you have to decide how they appear, right? And that's the fun part of this. You have to decide how are these characters going to appear in your book. This is the really fun part because you get to play around with all sorts of different uh, looks to your characters. You may have one that's, uh, I don't know, a little, a little edgy, okay, such as this little guy here. All right. You may have one that's a, a little more simple. Uh, I mean, a little more calm, I guess is a good way to put it. She looks worried because something happens in the story. All right. So I want you to think about how your characters will appear. So storyboard creation is all about designing all these elements of your story, right? And we're going to be going into a little bit more instructional top videos on the holler or a video I'm going to be producing today actually. Um, that's going to help you figure out how do you decide what your character looks like, okay? And those will be available um, a little bit later on today. Um, the video I think might be up there by tomorrow. I'm hoping it will. So be sure and resource the holler. So designing your characters. You have these lists and then you go into the design phase, okay? Now, we're going to be meeting and we're going to be talking about creating your character next time. We're going to be fleshing it out more. Um, but I want you to think about the setting of your story. The setting is very important. Now, you might be wondering, teachers that are... Uh, third and fourth grade, and you're like, well, how in the world do we apply this to, to uh, third and fourth grade and so on? Early, the first video, I, I remember I asked you that a lot of this you're going to have to maybe dissect because it covers such a broad range of grades, right? So one activity that you could do for your students to help them understand what a setting is, is this here. I want you to take um, different images. So you may have, um, uh, let's see, we'll have one of Santa Claus, okay? Let's draw Santa Claus here. All right, you'll have Santa Claus. Okay, you'll have a farmer. All right. I'm going to sketch these out pretty fast so we can stay on track on time. So we have a farmer. Have him holding a rake, maybe. And you can pull these off the internet. You don't have to necessarily draw them. Maybe an alien. I don't know. All sorts of different stuff, okay? So we have an alien and so on. Maybe a fish, too, right? Okay. All of these things are incredibly different from one another. So what you can do for your students is pick images associated with Santa Claus and Christmas, images associated with farming, Images associated with space and, and science fiction, or maybe images associated with, with under the sea. You take all those images and you scramble them up and you ask them to put them into groups. Now, some images are going to overlap, such as um, reindeer or deer on a farm and also Santa Claus. So, obviously, some things will overlap. But this is a great exercise that will hopefully help guide you in uh, getting your students to understand more what a setting is and such, okay? All right, so you're your setting in your book is going to be the background, basically, right? So your characters will be in the story, and then your setting is going to appear around the characters. So here's one we'll draw of the beach. Who would like to be on the beach right now, huh? So we got an island. Here's the water. Okay. What's that, what's some more stuff we could add to show this is going to be a beach in the ocean? We could put a we could put a ship out here. Okay. Draw the Titanic. <laughs> Something like that, okay? And the sun, maybe. All right. 
I bet it, I, be, I won't say that. I was going to say I, I bet the folks of the Titanic uh, would have rather went south. But um, so you see what I mean. This is um, this is how you set up your setting. So your setting is your background. So you take that list that you created earlier along with your characters and you apply that in this way. Okay. We got a lot more to cover, so let's go forward. All right. Let's do an example. Let's do an example. I'm going to combine characters and a setting here to show you what I mean. All right. Example. All right, so let's have a, a knight, okay, in armor. We'll have a knight in armor, and the story can be something like the knight is going to go to the top of this mountain, right, and save the princess from an evil dragon. So there we go. So we'll have our knight here. Have his sword. Right? Okay. So that's one of my characters. Okay? Next is the setting. There's a mountain involved. So I'm going to draw the mountain in the background. And you can imagine this mountain would appear a lot larger maybe in your book, but... For the purpose here, this will help us understand. So now we have a mountain. And at the top of the mountain here, we'll have this goofy little dragon. Okay? So he's up there hanging out at the top of the mountain, looking down at the night. And there's our second character. Okay? And then maybe in the background here we could draw the princess. All right. Okay, so here we go. Now, we have the knight, the dragon, the princess, and hopefully what looks like a mountain. So the setting in this would be what? The mountain, right? And the characters in this will be your knight, your dragon, and your princess, okay? So let's move on fairly quickly. Like I said, there's a lot to cover, okay? So words to pictures, what does that mean exactly? And how does this apply to storyboard? I want you to remember your template. It's very important. So if you start creating something that is completely... Um, Let's say you start designing a storyboard that's going to be used for a comic book, and then you try to create a picture book from it, you're going to run into a lot of problems, right? Okay. Now, the first thing you do in creating your storyboard is you want to make boxes, all right? And you can take one sheet of paper and draw boxes on there, you know, however many you want to fit in. These boxes represent an individual page of your book, okay? Every box. From start to cover to the back of the book, you're going to have it in boxes, okay? That's, that's the first and most important thing. Now, when you're creating a storyboard, you know how we were creating earlier the design of your character? Do not overcomplicate this. You do not have to do basically two versions of the same book. I want you to draw very rough sketches. You have to design your cover, okay? That's important. On your cover, think about where the title is going to appear. Now, I'm using this example as a picture book layout, okay? This applies, though, to the other templates. Then you, at the bottom, you're going to write page one, page two, and page three, and so on and so forth. I want you to keep in mind, though, very rough sketches. Now, what this allows you to do on your page is you see what the flow of the book is. You may want to dedicate your book to someone. You may want to have the cover. Then as soon as you open up the front cover, to mom and dad. Okay? So you may have a dedication page. The next thing I want you to do is to start your story. You have uh, your story broken down into your list of characters and your list of settings. You read your story and you decide what are the elements from your story that you'll use on your page. Okay? Very roughly sketch those out. So you'll have like stick figures, all right? 
I have um, one character here in the front. Let's draw like a round circle that'll be a kitchen table, a square for a box of cereal, another um, stick figure here sitting down maybe eating a bowl of cereal. You may think about your setting now. It's in a kitchen, so add things to help the reader understand where they are. You may add a refrigerator back here. You may put a window right here, curtains. Okay, see what I mean? So there we go. We have the layout of the first page. Very rough, no, not a lot of detail to it. This helps guide you. Now once you continue this process over and over and over, all the way to the end, you can then go back and look at your blueprints, your storyboard, to create your final product, right? Okay, now let's look at a chapter book real fast. For chapter book, for a chapter book, like we said, there's a lot of more words going to be used on the page. Okay, the illustrations are going to be there. Um, you can decide how you're going to shape the book. This is called orientation, big fancy word for um, how, how the book is positioned. You got an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You turn it sideways. This is called landscape orientation. When it's up and down like this, it's portrait orientation. Okay? So for a chapter book, same thing. Cover, title, okay, maybe a dedication. And then you start to figure out what words are going to appear on what page. If your story is really long, then you may decide um, this first paragraph will be on the first page and continue down the line. So once you know what words are going to appear, let's say these are the words at the bottom, then you're going to add your illustrations. A lot of times in picture books, the illustration is within some sort of a border. Maybe it's floating. It's up to you. Again, you're going to use really, really basic shapes to show what's happening on the page, okay? You continue that on through. Now, my book, Irby's Turn to Rape, is a combination, and I wrote and illustrated this in 2012. This is a combination of picture books and a chapter book. Um, if you open it up, you'll see what I mean. You see that there's a lot of words down here. It's broken into chapters. There's two pages per chapter, okay? But you also notice that it has very full, large illustrations. This is one option you have. Combine a picture book and a chapter book. It's, it's an option, okay? All right. Now let's go on for a second and take a look at a comic book template. Now this is probably going to be the most difficult, but it's also the one you probably know the most about, really. For a storyboard for your comic book, this is how you're going to have to do it, okay? So let's pretend these are two 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper, okay? I want to turn these into my storyboard for my comic. You have to think about your cover. There's going to be artwork that extends to all edges of your cover, okay? Once you have your cover down, that begins the actual storyboard process. So what you'll do is you'll take an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and you start designing your pages. So that means you decide where the boxes or panels will go, what shape they'll be in, how many, that sort of thing. You want to keep in mind you only have a limited amount of space. If you, if you use a ton of boxes or panels on that page, it's going to be difficult to read. You're going to be drawing really small, and you're not going to have a good experience, okay? So draw out your panels. Read your story. Go along with your story and decide where am I going to place the panels and what will appear in each panel. And like I said, this is kind of probably the most... Um, challenging storyboard to create, but it's fun. So the first panel might be a city. So you'll draw just buildings. Really rough, okay, city. The next one might be a building top, top of a building. And you have a character up here looking down. Okay, so on and so forth. Draw out each panel on every page. Draw what's going to appear in there. And have an idea then, leave room for speech balloons, narrative boxes, okay, things like that. Now what a narrative box is, let's say you have a panel, nothing's going on, no characters are communicating. 
So you'll use a box, a panel inside a panel, and you'll put your words in there, okay? To tell the reader, it was a sunny day in Metropolis and all was well, or something like that, okay? It was a cheesy example, but you know what I mean. All right. And also, you could um, think about orientation. You don't have to follow this typical layout for a comic book. You may even want to do one like this. I mean, it's totally up to you what you want to create, okay? All right, time to take a couple of notes real fast. Steps to create a storyboard, all right? So here we go. Um, I think that we're backwards on the screen, but that's okay. Um, these will be available for you. Just listen to what I'm saying and jot down these notes. And like I said, the PDF will be available on the be Okay, all right, so hopefully you can see it. So here we go. Establish, create a timeline. Step number one, okay? What is a timeline? How you create this is you read your story. On a separate sheet of paper, you have your story here, and on a separate sheet of paper, you start making notes, okay? List the main events that happen in your story in the order that they appear in your story. So it might be, number one, um, man wakes up in the morning in his house. That's, that's the event, okay? Uh, number two, man brushes his teeth and gets ready for the day. Number three, man is driving to work on the interstate. Number four, man sees a spaceship coming down from the heavens. Step number five, or event number five, spaceship lands in the middle of the interstate. Uh, step number, uh, event number six, an alien appears coming from the vessel, something like that. Now, out of all those events I just listed, each one of those are important to your story, but what do you think is probably the most important? Um, eventful part of that. It would be the last one, right? The alien coming out of the spaceship. So what this does is it helps you to see what events are taking place in your story, the order that they come in, and what's most important, okay? What to illustrate over other parts, that kind of thing. Step number two, and we talked about this for a minute, identify key scenes of your story, all right? This is where you have to pay attention to the different elements of your story, the conflict, conflict resolution, what we call rising action, building up in the, the suspense or the action of the, of the story, the ending, um, inter when you introduce a new character. All of these things are key scenes to your story and should you should have those highlighted on your list. Step number three, you need to write a short description of what's going to appear on each page. So even though you have your events listed and you have your story beside that, on every page, write out a description of what's going to be on every page, okay? It may be something as simple as just pulling one of those events and saying this is what's going to happen. So um, you want to pay attention to the setting here. Um, if the setting's the same all throughout your story, and this is really important, let's say you have a story that's taking place in a school library. Uh, the, the story opens up in the library, all the events take place in the library, and the, and the story ends in the library. You have to think about interesting ways to draw the library on every page. If you draw a square box from the same uh, what we call perspective, then, then you know that might be less interesting than say um, drawing from a different perspective. And what I mean by that is, um, I'll flip ahead a little bit and show you. Perspective is like this. Here we have a square room. Now this is looking at it from front perspective. So you may have a table here, you may have a window, and a chair here, okay? So that's a room, right? And over here we could put a door. I want you to think about different ways to show that room in your artwork. You may decide to show it from an angle. You may decide to show the chair from an angle. Um, what this does is it helps to break up the problem of having everything taking place in one location. Okay? Think about a movie. Think about the different angles that the camera is in. Sometimes it's looking down on the character. Sometimes it's at the floor looking up. Sometimes it's in a corner of a room, right? Sometimes it's looking in through a window. Think about these things while you're creating your storyboard. Okay? All right. 
Now, the fourth step here is to sketch each page in those small boxes or thumbnails that I showed you earlier. Rough sketch. It doesn't have to be too detailed. Basically, get all the information you can get in there, okay? Here's an example. So here's an example of a uh, page layout for, let's say, a picture book, all right? We have uh, basically stick figures, except I use circles, all right? Over here, we have a layout then um, of how you would draw the, the scenes um, in these thumbnails, all right? And out from the scenes, you have a description of each page, just what we've covered, all right? So you have box, little boxes, um, the, the uh, rough version of what's appearing on the page, and then the description out from it. If you set it up just like this, when you start creating the actual work for your book, it's going to flow so much easier, okay? Now, a little bit later on today, I'm going to be talking about um, a thing called the Marvel Method. Now, what the Marvel Method is, is a style of drawing. And it's a really, really good method. Uh, I think I use it um, when you're designing characters or different parts of your story. What the Marvel Method is, um, Stan Lee, everyone knows who Stan Lee is, and um, a lot of the uh, Will Eisner and a lot of the older gentlemen from early comics era, they came up with a method when drawing um, organic shapes. So what I mean by organics, human beings, animals, cats, dogs, that kind of thing. Okay, And it combines different shapes and circles and things to create your, your uh, the look. So what you would start out doing is making circles. So you may make a circle here for the head. You may make a circle here for the neck and shoulders. You'll do a, another circle here for the shoulder. You make a circle for the torso, a circle down here, that kind of thing. And then what you do from there is you go back in and you start adding all these details to it, right? You may uh, have to erase. I did this in pen. That's okay. But you may have to go back and erase and reshape it some. All right? To get the full um, look of your character. So, like for here, for instance, I'm going to sketch out Iron Man, right? So. I would erase this line right here, but I did it in marker, but that's okay. Um, what this does is it serves as a guideline for you to add in details, right? And once you start adding in details, you basically just have to follow um, the shapes that you've created, the circles and things of that nature. All right, and it's a, it's a great method to use. Uh, no artist really starts out when they're drawing a human form by just um, adding details. They, they always build what, what's called like a skeleton or this Marvel method where you know what's going to appear before you even do it, okay? It's real important to do that. I know a lot of young artists have trouble with drawing uh, humans, okay? Shapes like that that deal with uh, the human form and such. But if you follow this method, it's going to help you a great deal. There'll be more of this on the videos I'm going to be creating, okay? So we're just going to do this really rough kind of sketch right now to show you how I use this. And then a little bit later today, I'll be creating a video kind of giving more instruction to this, all right? This is a terrible Iron Man, but this is just kind of to give you an idea. Hands also, we're going to be looking at that. Hands are really hard to draw. Now, if I could go back and erase here, you see I would have room to uh, um, shape this up a little bit, right? I'd be able to get rid of these lines I didn't use for the circle. That kind of stuff, okay? All right. So I want you to practice some. Uh, character design is going to come a little bit later. But we're going to be doing that now, but we're going to get more detailed as we go, okay? And that's why we're breaking this up into two parts, too. Because character design is uh, very, it's, it's, it's sort of, um, it's really broad. Like, your characters could be, you could have animals in your books, you could have fish, you could have humans, you could have all sorts of things, robots or whatever. So, covering that, you know, it's going to take some time, all right? So, what, what we're going to be doing next week 
And first, I'll tell you what kind of I hope you to be working on now. Um, I want you to be working on the storyboard. Um, you may want to sketch out some characters like we talked about earlier. List those characters, two sheets of paper, list of characters, and list of settings. Get familiar with your settings, okay? Um, the next thing I want you to do is to read your story, break it down into parts, events. List all the events as a timeline and how they appear in your story from start to finish, okay? Go back through all of those lists of events Highlight the most important ones. Take that timeline along with your story and draw out the boxes and sketch what's going to appear on every page and then write a description of what's appearing on that page. That's what I want you to be working on. And if you right now if you're having trouble deciding what how you how to draw your character, what your character is going to look like, don't worry. The tutorial video we're going to be posting will help. I'll have additional links to to other resources. Um, all of this is going to be a two-week process of developing your characters and your storyboard. But we need to get started, though, on breaking down your story into those events and understanding the parts of your story. All right? Um, so the Marvel method, later on today, using circles. So here's another example. So here's a circle, 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 right? Okay? And then I'll draw a circle for the front of the body, circle for the back of the body, circle for the feet, that kind of thing. Now I'll go back once I have this, and I'll start to add the detail. I have an ear here, an ear here, eyes here, I'm gonna add the lip here, okay? This is gonna be the, the collar. This is a dog if you can't tell. Alright, so there we have a collar, right? Alright. Okay, back here we can add the leg. Here we have the front legs. And a wagon tail, right? So I just used circles to create that. It was fairly quick and stuff, but this is how you could do that. And then it's all about, like I said in the beginning, taking a circle, I mean a line, and shaping it, okay? That's all it is. So. Let me see, I think that's it for today. How much time do we have? Eight minutes? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, I'll sketch out some more stuff here. Keep it simple, okay? That's the most important thing. If you want to get really detailed with it, absolutely. More power to you, please. Go as detailed as you want. But if you're feeling overwhelmed right now with all the drawing and the character creation, don't do that. All right, keep it simple. It's supposed to be fun. I want you to have a great time doing this, okay? So let's go ahead and I'll show you another kind of quick um, circle technique. So here we have a circle for a head, okay? Circle for the neck. I'll draw a sort of an oval shape for the arm and a circle for the hand, okay? I'll draw a circle for the body. All right. I'll have this one holding a paper. Here's the other arm. And here's the paper, okay? So then you can go back and you start adding details. Put a dress on her. Here's her feet. All right, I'm going to add the eyes, mouth, add some hair. OK, simple, right? And then and also we could do it again for a little boy here. Now, if I could erase these circles, you could see what I mean more. Um, you can see how sort of it's applied more, okay? So there we have uh, circles that look sort of like a human body. And then you can go back in. The eyes, I just put, you know, little circles. Nothing too complicated or detailed. And the hair. And see what you can do. I, now, like I said, I'm drawing in a magic mark with a magic marker here. Well, what you would do is draw this in pencil. You'd sketch it out in pencil. Then after you go back, um, take a take a pen and you draw the, over the lines you want. After you draw in the detail, and then you erase all those other pencil lines. And that's how you create these characters. Uh, well, since we have time, I'm I'm going to show you a um, example of a storyboard I created real fast.
I'll be back in the picture in a second. Here we go. All right. So here we go. This is an example for a comic, okay? So I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a storyboard, all right? And the storyboard is really rough sketches. There we go. Very rough sketches of what's going to appear on each panel, right? It's not real detailed. Uh, mine can get a little detailed, but yours don't have to be. All right, so then I take this right here, and then I start drawing it on a larger sheet. You see that? So this is everything that appeared on that storyboard. I already know what's going to happen in every box. Some uh, artists like to use a uh, graph sheet. And see, once it's printed in the newspaper, that's what it looks like, okay? It's shrunk down quite a bit, right? So that's the process of creating these. Graph paper is really great for this. If you have any graph paper in your room, pull out a few sheets because you can use those squares to draw out your panels without having to use a ruler each time. So that's a little bit of a little bit of a tip there for you if you want to use it, okay? But just 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 remember that we're, we're working with a limited amount of space, and it's inside this space that everything happens. Your story, okay? Um, I want you to keep that in mind as we go along. There's also resources that you could get. There's books on how to do this sort of thing. If you really like this and want to maybe work this in as a career, which we talked about last time, there's tons of careers when it comes to graphic design, illustration, and, and, and even, even with cartooning, game design, animation. A lot of folks don't realize this. You think, well, if I can't work for Disney or Marvel, there's no way I could ever have a career in this. But that's not true. Um, there's books on helping uh, you to understand how to create storyboards better. Okay, you can Google those. This one here is called um, How to Draw Comic Strips by Alan McKenzie. <clears throat> now, if you're really, really motivated, this book here, is, I highly suggest this one. It's called Writing with Pictures. It's by um, Uri Schulwitz. This book basically helps you to understand all the different types of things that an illustrator has to think about when they start to illustrate a book. Because you can get really in-depth with this stuff. Um, think of a movie. You have the opening scene of a movie. How does the director introduce you to the story? You may be flying in from over top of mountains going into a small town, right? Illustrators have to think about this with books as well. How, how to open up the scene of the book how to carry along, how to build suspense. So if this is the kind of stuff that you're interested in, get resources. There's tons of jobs one day out, and once you get through school, um, especially if you go on to art school or something, you can work drawing and uh, creating stuff as a, as a living. Another thing I really want to make sure I cover while I'm here today is that um, none of this stuff is going to be available to you as an option if you mess around with drugs or... or um, you know, alcohol, okay? Um, like I shared with you the first time we met, when, you know, I had, I had a few, few, few um, things to happen in my own personal life that was really difficult. Just got out of the Army, lost my mom, my brother. Um, instead of going down different paths that were really destructive, you know, I chose to use that, that moment in time to express myself through art. And I hope that if you have are experiencing any types of troubles or challenges, and you really don't know how to talk about them, or who to talk to, you know, who to talk to about it, or, or you may not even want to talk to anybody about it. The, um, what I what I really suggest for you trying is to express that either in a in a um, mini comic or a book. You don't have to tell exactly what happened, but create. That's my point. Create and share. Okay. All right. If you have any questions at all. You could go ahead and type those in, um, and I'll, I'll answer those while I'm here. Um, I really want to encourage everybody to log on to theholler.org and get involved with, um, um, you know, communicating and sharing your work and things like that, okay? Because it's a great opportunity uh, for our students, all right? Any questions at all? The link's going to be put uh, made available in the communication box. Uh, for, you, for you. If you haven't visited theholler.org yet, or maybe you just logged in, created an account, and then you never went back, 
I really highly encourage you to go back and check it out. There's resources, and I really want to applaud the teachers who have been very interactive. There's been a there's been a few that have been super interactive. Early on, um, we we didn't have resources the first day after the presentation because we were working on things, and teachers got motivated and they uh, created content and put it on there. And I really appreciate that. Um, it means a lot. Okay. So I don't guess we have any any questions. So. While we're waiting, thank you for joining us today. But I want to uh, make sure that we talk about how to go to the link session. Um, while Christopher was presenting, I had received several texts and emails asking, how do we join the link session? In Outlook, if you'll go to the calendar within Outlook, every Monday, like after we've recorded this morning, I'm going to go back to my office and send out the invitation for next week's meeting. So if you you could you know search by not my name or by the dates on Monday to see all of the email that comes from me, but I will always send you a calendar invite. And the reason I send the calendar invite, it um, it'll give you a reminder. And I set it to give you a reminder about 15 minutes before the meeting. So it's easier just to go to Outlook, go to the calendar in Outlook and go to that Monday and there will be a link invitation. Now when I send it out this afternoon, it's going to ask you, do you want to accept or decline this invitation? Click on accept and it will put it, embed it in your calendar and then it will send you reminders of the session next Monday. Belfry High School, I want to just remind you again to stay on after we finish the question and answer session just to make sure that our internet is working properly for us to be able to record um, from Pike County and Belfry High School next Monday. All right, Christopher. Okay, thank you. We do have uh, one question. What is the maximum number of pages that we may include in a book or a comic? That's a great question. Um, the more the better. The printing um, devices that are very cool, by the way, that we have uh, uh, obtained, we have four, and they're binding machines. They have the capability of um, binding as low as five pages all the way up to uh, 40 so. Um, if, if we do have any books over 40, that's fine. Uh, we have the capabilities. We have to order, you know, the, the binding pieces. So um, that's one thing that I'd really like for you to do. Any teachers that have students that are looking to create a book over 32 pages or so, please let me know. That way I can make sure and get the proper amount of uh, binders, okay? We have some artwork as I was walking around the classroom, some students... Um, we're kind of sketching and, and doodling as Christopher was doing his presentation today. I've got another little gal over here. Why don't you bring yours up? Um, I just want you guys to kind of look at the, the art and the sketches that are um, going on even while Christopher uh, is uh, making his sketches on the board. <laughs> here are some other sketches going on. Come on, show yours. Come up here. Hold it up high so wow. I can see. There you go. Good job. Come on around here. Are you sure you don't want to come up here and show yours? Come on. Very cool. <laughs> and what, what okay. medium is that? What kind of paint did you use? Acrylic? Oh, that's really cool. Pencil. You did a really good job. Uh, the really gentleman job. that did this one, it's just in pencil, like a mad scientist in a lab. And he's sitting back here, but a little bit shy and doesn't want to come up. So I'm just sharing his form. What's your name? So make sure that you get on the holler.org in the art holler and share anything that you've sketched. Nicholas Atkins is the one who created the, the comic. That's a. If you look at my sketchbook, Nicholas, that's a. You'll see a lot of that stuff like that. We have similar Facebook. So I hope everybody had a good time. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that we don't have any uh, problems with um, uh, the progress and the flow of things. I hope you've got a story written and you're get you're, you're already set now to begin the second phase of that. Do we have some more? Oh, oh that's wow. really good. Look at awesome. That. What's your that's name? That's amazing. Name? Yeah. Tell them. Yeah. Megan Howard. And what grade are you in? 10th. 10th grade. 10th grade. Awesome. That's amazing. Oh, wow. That's really cool. It's amazing. See, I'm really excited about this. This is really good. I can't draw out that good. That's awesome. So it, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait. Share your work on the hauler. Get on there. Um, scan it. Take a picture of it. Upload the image. Share it. Please do that. Uh, the more involvement we have, the better. Um, hopefully this is something that we can continue to do each year. Who knows? So we'll see how, how it all goes. But thanks so much. I hope all the, all you students and teachers have a great rest of your day. And um, see you next time, okay?
Bye. 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 Goodbye here from Agatha County High School. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I don't want to unmute that. At the beginning, It should come up like it should come up and okay. show the little tile. Mm -hmm. And then you click on browse. The recording can't be played from the recording manager. So we're not trying to play it. He said right click. <laughs> Maybe go to browse there. No. Just go down to copy location. And it should tell us. Maybe, okay, let me go on this one and see. See, this one. Yeah. 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 Go, 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 brothers. Because that's for that's the second one. We okay, need to right here. Right here. Is it already there? Uh, station to the virtual uh, art gallery. But is that on the. I don't know. It's Windows. It's on this computer. Let's go up there and click it. Hey, Andrew, we just wanted you on the phone with us while we're trying to. Okay, click on that in the desktop there. Uh, now, what, is your link thing called Z? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we have to do. Yeah, we got to save it. Is your removable uh, thing called Z, you think? Z Drive? Oh, here, wait. You didn't have one in there. That's fine. Oh, okay. That's fine. That, that could be the problem. I do. I will have to go to the park. Okay, let me run to the park now. <laughs> Um, I think we're still connected. Oh, this Telling it's showing up like a. Okay, so we've got it. We've got it on the windows part right now, but we just didn't have the flash drive in. Okay, so so if it's on the windows, then we don't have to really worry about going going off the. Well, I guess we ought to just. Okay, see, when I was on the TV, I got it up and went to the shop. We brought it up and put it in our house. We're going to virtual session two. 
And when we right click, it says coffee location. No, I bought one. No, really. Uh -huh. Sugar glider. I can't believe you never heard of it. When we get in, no, we don't have one. Uh, right. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I know you saw this before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you draw me one? Oh, you Are we needed? Yeah. Whenever it gets to the
Oh, no, so that might be right here. 